Can we do our roll call, please? Mrs. Berrigan? Here. Ms. Anderson? Here. Mrs. Ward? Here. Dr. Wong? Present. And if you can all please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by one of our seven. So, phrases like every moment counts, don't take your foot off the gas, finish strong, those phrases describe our approach to the remainder of the school year. Simply put, we will be working to teach as much as possible to every student between now and the end of the school year. Thank you to our entire instructional team for all they will be doing in the next well, that was supposed to be for you guys to guess how many days we have left. Yes. That's not a bunch of small. That's not me. In the next 34. 34 days. So 34 days, in case you're counting. I know as a kid I counted, uh, but uh, we do. We're excited about these next 34 days, and we're going to be working uh, very hard during the, that time. So, next slide. Okay. Congratulations to Paseo Point 8th grade student Skylar Marshall. Skylar took first place in our 2020 district spelling bee and moved on to compete at the regional level. Skylar was also a runner up in the 2019 spelling bee, which is where this photo was taken. Why are you wondering? Well, this year's bee was conducted virtually with contestants, contestants participating in a timed online test through the Scripps platform. Skylar was the only district participant to achieve a perfect score. Skylar is also a leader at Paseo Point as the president of their National Junior Honor Society, and we wish her all the best as she heads to high school next year. EFGA fourth grade teacher Katrina Connolly was featured yesterday on ABC 15, not only as a great teacher, but as a difference maker in our community. Ms. Conley was cleaning out her closet recently when she decided to start a clothing and supply drive for UMON New Day Centers. Her house is now jam-packed with bags of clothing and, and toiletries to be donated. She will be accepting more donations through April 11th. Levine Elementary School held its Ohana Run 2021 on March 18th. Ohana is a Hawaiian term that means family, and family means no one is left behind or forgotten. This fun run included all Levine Elementary School students, whether they were attending in person or online. In-person students completed laps on a fun-filled track with inflatables and live music. Online students danced virtually with the Dance Fit crew online. All students and staff received Ohana 2021 t-shirts. This is a community building event and a celebration of Levine students and staff that continue to work hard and persevere in preparation for state testing. The, the event was made possible by support from numerous community sponsors. Speaking of state testing, just a reminder for the board, as we head uh, into April and May, that we will begin the AZM2 state test in third through eighth grade. This will be very important for us as it provides both our parents and our district staff with a reliable measure of their students' learning. It allows comparisons between 2019 and 2021 this year, 
Remember, we did not uh, administer the AZM2 last year and will be used in planning for next year. We are in testing season. <clears throat> like many things during the pandemic, recruiting and hiring teachers for the 21-22 school year has taken on a different look. We, while we were unable to host or attend in-person job fairs, we did attend many virtual job fairs. So, in Arizona, we went to the U of A, but virtually. We went to NAU, virtually. Grand Canyon's virtual uh, recruiting event. And there was a statewide uh, recruiting event as well. We also went to three, I believe, Mr. Thomas, Ohio uh, recruiting events virtually, and one at the beautiful University of Northern Iowa which I think I've been snowed in twice at that uh, recruiting event. But, uh, uh, so, the results, well, I'm sorry, in addition to attending these virtual job fairs, we also increased our advertising on social media by asking our staff to post our flyer and salary schedule to their media platform. The Levine School District's reputation, I cannot underemphasize this, for having a strong teacher salary, one-to-one -one technology device ratio, well-maintained facilities and a positive climate and culture continue to allow us to attract quality candidates. We are being tracked down. We are not tracking down. People are finding us. It's very exciting. So far this recruiting season, we have hired 57 new Levine teachers, and we currently have only four unfilled teaching positions remaining for next year. And I want to say thank you to Mr. Thomas and our HR team for their work. And this is your recruiting group right here. They do an outstanding job. Uh, they are on top of uh, all the hiring that they need to do. So thank you to our principals and APs uh, for all your work uh, to get us fully staffed. Next, the Levine Action Committee, Community Action Committee hosted a drive-through through, drive spring clean food giveaway on March 20th, Saturday, March 20th, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m at the Levine Education Center. The event was organized by Shannon Richmond, who serves on the LCAC Gap Stop Committee and is the director of the South Mountain Block Watch. Several organizations were present in order to give away resources and information. So I'm going to read all these organizations just so you get a scope of, of how the LCAC is pulling in community groups and bringing them together to serve our community. So here we go. First things first, Phoenix Place, CCB Church, Levine, Crosswork Church, Phoenix Public Library, Levine LDS Missionaries, Phoenix Block Watch, South Mountain Community College, Maricopa County Supervisor Steve Barrow, uh, Levine Baptist Church, Urban Farming Education, Levine Lions, and St. Mary's Food Bank. Approximately 400 cars drove through the event, and a special thanks to uh, Sarah Zabruski and the staff from a straight foot bills for volunteering. This next slide, I, I'm very happy to let you know, just a quick update. Uh, every Thursday, our uh, community metrics come in and, and Levine is now in the moderate range, uh, which we were up over 1,100 cases per 100K uh, at our peak. And so it's been nice to see our numbers go down. Uh, both, especially in the cases per 100K. We did go up a little bit in percent positivity, but this is very, very encouraging news uh, for our district and for the community as a whole. Also wanted to make sure that you are aware that we do have some, let's click to the first arrow, which uh, in our elementary schools, we, have, we do have some new guidance from the CDC that uh, reduces the distance between students to three feet and also the same for uh, next arrow, uh, Butch, for middle schools, uh, three feet as well, as long as we are in the low, moderate, or substantial community transmission. This is kind of guiding us towards next year and what our, our, our campuses will look like. Note that we always try to maximize distance between the students. This is a, a new guidance. I also did want to emphasize uh, the next arrow, uh, Butch, is uh, we still look to maintain six feet or maximum distance between adults uh, and adults and students uh, in, in school buildings. So the next slide. 
And I also wanted to emphasize to the board that uh, you know there's a lot of discussion always about maps, and that we are not, uh, as I said earlier, taking our foot off the pedal when it comes to maps. That will be part of our uh, mitigation strategies. It's one of the two top, uh, you know, according to the CDC, ways to mitigate the spread of COVID, along with distancing. Uh, is is wearing masks, and so we will continue that. And and just so you know, if you you know heard uh, the most recent executive order uh, regarding uh, reduced use of masks in our state, that does not apply to schools. And it, uh, that our current we're operating off of 2020 51, uh, and so we will continue to have our students and our staff wearing masks throughout the rest of the school year. Next, we have our employees of the month. We'll start with Stephanie Carillon, uh, who is our now lead custodian at Vista Del Sur School. What's kind of cool about this is she was nominated when she was the assistant lead custodian, and now she, obviously, doing great work, got pro it, it has received the promotion to the lead custodian position. She is always uh, ready to support a student who may be having a difficult day due to a cleanup situation or a staff member who needs assistance. She is a self-starter, completes tasks in a timely manner, and is always willing to learn. She attends school functions and encourages parent involvement at VISTA. I called, uh, talked to Ms. Epax earlier today, and just said, there's no one that has a work ethic, ethic like Stephanie, and how thankful she is for her. She also, by the way, serves as the assistant coach for the softball. So Stephanie Carrion, let's give her a round of applause. And Stephanie, if your family and you are watching right now, we, we, def we definitely thank you for all you're doing. Next, our certified employee of the month is Rebecca Gutierrez, who is a uh, preschool uh, teacher at Paseo Point. She is always looking for ways to help her students achieve their maximum potential, both in English and in Spanish instruction. She finds different ways for them to grasp the concepts that will help them to be successful kindergarten students. She is always present to support her students at school, even during distance learning, and can be counted on to support any preschool or extracurricular events. She also has two children of her own at the sale point, and Let's recognize Rebecca Gutierrez. <laughs> Likewise to you and your family, thank you, Rebecca. Speaking of the sale points, so we have a LMB winner, employee of the month, and we also have our classroom spotlight uh, with Mr. Roloff, principal of the sale points. So Mr. Roloff. Good evening, uh, President Badagan, Governing Board, Dr. Sprout, Levine Community, um, the Sale Point families watching online. Primeramente, yo quiero decirle gracias para su invitación esta noche. Y también, yo quiero decir gracias a nuestra maestra Gonzalo Sotelo, a Maestro Herrera, Maestra Aki, los estudiantes para trabajando muy duro en este video hoy. So basically, I want to start by um, saying thank you for having us at the meeting tonight, but a big thanks to Ms. Gonzalez Sotelo, uh, Mr. Herrera, and Ms. Aki, and the students and the families for their flexibility, because they had been practicing all week, and they were super excited to come and talk to you guys in Spanish, and read in Spanish, and share with you in Spanish, and when we decided to go virtual, um, you know, the great people we have at the sale point jumped in and they're like, let's make a video, we're ready to go, we can do this. So they were able to pull it together today and make a video so that we can share some of the great things we're doing at the sale point. Obviously, as a um, DLI signature school, I didn't want to scare you with the Spanish, but it's something that we hear in our hallways um, daily and we love the language and we love the culture. And um, before we start the video, I just want to say thank you to you guys for the support of our program. Thank you to Dr. Sprout, District Administration. Uh, Christy Pashley, she's a very hard person to take over after she <laughs> did a great example setting uh, the tone at the school. And 
as you can see, she did a great job with the teachers and the students there. So uh, I was able to inherit a great school in a rough year. And I know you guys are here to see the kids. So with no further ado, we'll, we'll let the kids do the talking. Spanish side and I've been teaching her at Paseo Point for four years. Out of those four years, three years I've been DLI. Hi, I'm Justine Aki. I am his English counterpart. I have been teaching here at De Paseo Point for five years and out of those five years, three of them have been DLI. Hello, I'm Gabriel Garcia and I'm in fourth grade at Paseo Point, which is a dual language immersion school. This means that half of our day is in English while the other half is in Spanish. Not only are we learning Spanish, but we are also learning in Spanish. That means we learn math in Spanish and even social studies in Spanish. And the good thing is, is that both of our teachers are cool, so it makes it way easier. Hi, my name is Valerie Villegas. In Spanish language arts class this week, we read about how to go from poverty to love. Our focus was identifying the main idea and key details in the text. We sometimes read independently and sometimes with partners. Also, sometimes we read in small groups with our teachers. My name is Benton Abic. The book that we are reading is De la Pobreza de la Riqueza, which translates to From Poverty to Wealth. I will be reading the first part of page 42 from the book. En Pleros y Salarios. A las personas que desean hacerse ricas, algunas carreras les ayudarán a alcanzar ese objetivo más rápido que otras. Los salarios más altos con frecuencia los ganan quienes tienen títulos de posgrado. Los médicos, los abogados y los ingenieros pueden hacer trabajos especializados y ganar más dinero. Quienes tienen nuevas ideas sobre qué desean las personas pueden hacerse ricos rápidamente. Los empresarios forman empresas que crean nuevos productos para brindar a las personas lo que desean y necesitan. Hello, my name is Ryan Harris and I will be reading the second part of this page. Algunos de los empleos mejor pagos requieren tener un título de posgrado. Esto significa más años de estudio luego de los cuatro años de universidad. Muchos cirujanos, psiquiatras, jueces, abogados y empresarios van a la universidad durante seis a ocho años o incluso más luego de terminar la secundaria. Más años de estudio con frecuencia significan más dinero. Hello, and my name is Mariah Zocado. Not only do we learn how to read in Spanish, but we also learn how to write in Spanish. After we read a section of this book, we wrote about the ways we could get rich quick. Today, I'm going to read you a paragraph from my own essay. Quiere ganar dinero como todos esos ayudores, cantantes y bailarines y otros. La misión no va a ser fácil, pero aquí hay algunas formas de comenzar. El primer camino es tener un trabajo y ganar mucho dinero. El segundo camino es poner una tienda. Y el camino final es tener una carrera grande. Un ejemplo de apoyo a estos caminos es como el autora de las novelas de Harry Potter. Ella tiene una carrera grande. En conclusión, con un poquito de paciencia, usted puede ganar mucho dinero. Thank you all. Thank you all so much for inviting us to present to you today. Have a great evening.
students. We uh, appreciate uh, you being a part of our presentation tonight. And what a, what a special school we have over at Paseo Point. And, and so, uh, again, as, as Mr. Roloff said, thank you, board, for your support of initiating this school. And uh, with that, your medical test. Hola, Rita. <laughs> Is that we just want to continue the district's high level of fiscal responsibility. We have a dirty on. Uh, the other thing I'd like to point out is just that we always strive to continue to provide the most competitive benefit package to our, to our employees. Currently, we operate under a fully insured model. Right? And under a fully insured model, premiums are paid uh, by, by the district and, and by our employees. And from those premiums, medical claims are paid as well as prescription drug, drug uh, claims are paid out of the premiums that are collected throughout the year given to the insurance company. However, under our current model of a fully insured, the insurance carrier profits the difference between the premiums and the claims. So just to give you a simple example or some simple math, let's say that over a year we, we've uh, paid $3 million in, in, in premiums. And then after we've taken out the medical claims and the prescription claims, say the cost of those were $2.5 million. We have a half million dollars sitting out there that, you, in our case, United Healthcare get, gets to, to profit from, right? Um, another thing I'd like to point out under our fully insured model is that the insurance carrier controls the annual rate increases. And I'll talk more about that in, in just a second. And then finally, um, there's also a variety of, of, of taxes and fees that, that were charged under the fully insured model. On this slide, I spoke about the premiums that are paid. I would re be remiss if I didn't highlight that our district pays for those premiums for all of our employees. We have approximately 600 benefit eligible employees that we pay the premiums for in both the PPO and the high deductible plan. We have about 119 dependents that the employees pay, pay for of those premiums, but the bulk of those premiums are paid by, by the district. And when we talk about hiring and recruiting, uh, as part of Dr. Sprout's uh, superintendent update. I'm not sure if Avondale or still, still does it, but in talking with other HR directors across the, the state and, and colleagues, you know, many have pulled back from that with the cost of insurance and the fiscal situation we find ourselves in, you know, in, in these days and times. So that, and then the, uh, the insurance carrier controlling the annual rate increase. So I'm almost appalled to, to, to even present to you what, um, what the insurance carrier came to us with is in, in, in the beginning of an, our negotiation process. And I know in negotiation you always start high and you try to come to uh, a, a middle, but um, in a minute you'll see that we were running way over the, the premiums that we paid. So the example that I gave you of a, of a $3 million premiums and two and a half million in claims, if you profit at a half million dollars, why do you want to increase our rates by 20%? And that's what happens under the fully insured model when we go into negotiation there. So that's what we currently operate. So under the proposed self-insured or, or what the Levine Trust Board approved uh, on March 18th is that premiums will continue to be paid by in the same fashion that they were by the district and, and then the employees that select uh, for their coverage for their dependents. The district collects that money and then we are the responsible party to, to pay those claims. Um, which, in the same example, if there were $3 million in premiums and 2.5 in claims, the district would, would profit that or, or keep that, the half million dollars in that example. There is an administration cost um, to go in self-insured um, that our consulting company and our third party um, who helps with building Valley Schools, that's PEP is per employee per month. So uh, what does that administration cost cover? It covers a stop loss insurance. It allows us to continue in the UHC, the United Healthcare Network, uh, rent all their claims and processing. And then it also covers, like I said, our consulting process of working with Valley Schools. There is a little bit so when you talk about self-insured, you wonder about the risk of it, and that's what that um, stop-loss insurance helps cover. Um, there's an individual stop-loss of 150000 so if there is a, a claim that is substantial, more than $150,000, we're not responsible for anything over that $150,000. So 
it, it keeps our risk, it helps minimize our, our risk when we go to this model. And then our aggregate stop loss is 120%. So if we're running higher than the premiums um, that we paid in, then again, we, we're not gonna have a, a year that's just gonna wipe us out. So just to, in considering um, a self-insured model, we looked at data from the last two years, and I'd like to show you if we have been self-insured over the last couple of years. So uh, in the 2018-19, have we been self-insured uh, from the premiums that we paid minus the, the claims, we would have had a, a savings of $587,000. So again, that's a profit that UHC or the carrier was able to, to keep. Uh, and then last year, we were running a very similar pattern. We had a very similar pattern as you see. The, the same thing, had we been self-funded uh, or self-insured, we would have had a savings of, of $530,000 and then obviously the $1.1 million over the last two years. So um, we weren't self-insured the last two years, but hopefully we continue um, you know, we have, we have Levine, we have a, a, a younger staff, um, and we have health and wellness, and, and we expect that we'll, in the long term, every district's goal, I believe, is to, to be in this position to go self-insure, right? And, and being an uh, a organization that's forward-thinking and has a vision that's always looking, you know, for, for next year or the future. We can sit out with Makisa and, and bring the wealth of uh, knowledge, and so we're very excited to have you on. Welcome. I walked by earlier and told her we were all going to talk really fast tonight. And, <laughs> and then Christian just left. Yeah, just, just <laughs> water. Water. yeah right? Okay. Uh, board consideration for action. We are on trust funding for fiscal year 2021. It's recommended that we approve the three trusts for next year. Any discussion? Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Motion and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Meal prices and currently charging. I think it's a five cent increase if I remember correctly. Oh, that's right, it's a no increase. Correct. So, doing a no increase for the 2021 school year. Any discussion? Second, go ahead. Motion. 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 Good. Motions and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And we have. Uh, reports the approval of the psychology intern agreement between the Levine Elementary School District and Sunny Oswego. Do I have any discussion? Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Motion and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. You guys doing okay over there? Okay, very good. <laughs> <laughs> any comments from the board? Nothing for me. You sure? Yes. It's okay. Good to be here. Yeah, very good. Chef? Best of luck to all the testing that's happening in the month of April. Yeah. Okay. Well, Chronic's just looking forward to visiting the schools okay. for the end of the year. Very good. Yeah. Um, and hang in there for those last 34 days. I know it's been a tough year, but you guys have been troopers. Your staff has been troopers. We get through it together. Um, so just keep holding each other up. Okay, we have our next board meeting on May 6th, 2021. We're right here. I assume we'll be here. We may not be here. We may, if we're somewhere else, you'll let us know. <laughs> <laughs> and then change it on us again? <laughs> Maybe? That was a very fair thing. <laughs> I'll take it. Okay, very good. Uh, I need a motion to adjourn, please. Motion. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Good night, everybody. Good night.